Unlike deadlock prevention, deadlock avoidance is just avoiding the problem at runtime. Need matrix is simply max need matrix minus allocation matrix. The banker's algorithm checks, after providing requested resources, to the processes whether state remains in a safe state or, an unsafe state. Hello and welcome to Making IT Simple. Today in this video we will try to understand deadlock avoidance, and about banker's algorithm, which is, one of the deadlock avoidance algorithms. In previous videos we have covered about deadlock, necessary conditions for deadlock, and deadlock prevention techniques. If you haven't watched it already click at the top left corner, or you can also find it in the description below. So without wasting any time let us start the video after this short intro. Unlike deadlock prevention, deadlock avoidance is just avoiding the problem at runtime. In deadlock avoidance we have to provide information to the operating system. Like which processes are going to come, which resources will these processes require, for how much time processes will hold these resources. We have to give these detail before the processes start their execution. So that system can decide which process will perform, which process will not perform, which process will perform first. In short systems takes the information and decides actions based on that info that will avoid the deadlock. Banker's algorithm, it is one of the deadlock avoidance algorithm. It is called banker's algorithm because, it is majorly used in banking system, it helps to identify whether a loan should be given, or not. The algorithm in operating system checks for each process, whether allocating resources to a process may lead to deadlock or not. Let us solve one problem, to get a clear idea of the algorithm. Before starting to solve it, let's understand the problem statement. This is total number of resources available in the system. We have 3 instances of resource A, 17 instances of resource B, 16 instances of resource C e and 12 instances of resource D. For example we can say the system has 3 hard disks, 17 printers, 16 scanners, and 12 pen drives. This is allocation matrix. At a certain point of time, the number of resources allocated to processes are defined here. For example, Process P0 has no instance allocated of resource A, one instance of resource B, one instance of resource C and no instance of resource D. That is, process P0 has been allocated zero hard disk, one printer, one scanner, and zero pen drives. Similarly each process has been allocated with resources defined here in this allocation matrix. This here is maximum need matrix. In this matrix how much of each resource, each process could possibly request in its lifetime, to complete the execution is given. For example process P1 will require one hard disk, six printers, five scanners, and two pen drives to complete its execution. Similarly maximum possible need of each process is defined in this matrix. Now as we have allocation matrix, and maximum need matrix, we can calculate need matrix. Let us understand how. Let us consider process P1. Process P1 needs one hard disk, six printers, five scanners, and two pen drives to complete its execution, this is its maximum need. Let us write it down. One hard disk, two printers, three scanners, and one pen drive is already allocated to process P1, which we defined in allocation matrix. Let us write it down too. So process P1 needs one hard disk and it has got one hard disk, so it does not require more hard disk. Next it requires six printers and currently it has two printers, so it needs four more printers. Next it needs five scanners and currently has three scanners, so it requires two more scanners. And at last it needs two pen drives and currently has only one pen drive, so it requires one more pen drive. 
so it will require these many more resources. So its need matrix will be 0, 4, 2, and 1. Need matrix is simply max need matrix minus allocation matrix. So the need of P0 will be as follows, 0, 1, 0 and 0. Need of P2 will be as follows, 1, 0, 0 and 1. Need of P3 will be as follows, 0, 0, 2 and 0. Need of P4 will be as follows, 0, 6, 4 and 2. This is how we calculate the need matrix. So these instances of all these matrix at a point of time is called a state. The banker's algorithm checks, after providing requested resources, to the processes whether state remains in a safe state or, an unsafe state. That is will there be a deadlock or there won't be one. Now let us try to solve it and check whether we get a safe or unsafe state. First let us calculate available matrix. Available matrix defines how many resources are currently free, which are not allocated to any process. To calculate it, first we need to get total number of allocated resources. So one instance of resource A is allocated to process P1, and one instance to process P2, therefore in total two instances of resource A have been allocated. Similarly 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 6, in total 12 instances of resource B has been allocated. Similarly 1 plus 3 plus 6 plus 3 plus 1, in total 14 instances of resource C has been allocated. And last 1 plus 5 plus 2 plus 4, in total 12 instances of resource D has been allocated. So total number of resources we have in the system are as follows. And total number of allocated resources are as follows. So out of three instances of resource A, two have been already allocated, and we have one instance left free. Similarly out of 17 instances of resource B, 12 have been already allocated and we have five instances left. Similarly out of 16 instances of resource C, 14 have been already allocated, and we have two instances left. And last out of 12 instances of resource D, all 12 resources have been allocated and there are no free resources available, so zero. So currently the available matrix will be as follows. 1, 5, 2, and 0. Now let us check with these available instances of resources, can we complete request of any process and finish its execution. Let's go serially, and check process P0. So process P0 does not require any instance of resource A, and we have one instance of a left. Next it requires one instance of B, and we have five instances of it, so we can provide one instance of B. Next it does not require any instance of C, and we have two instances. And at last it does not require any instance of D, and we also have no instance of D left. So considering this, with available resources we can complete the need of process P0. So what will happen is, according to allocation matrix process P0 has these resources allocated to it currently. These are the available resources we have free at the moment. According to need matrix it needs just one instance of resource B, which is printer in our example and we can complete the need of process P0. So we provide one resource B to process P0. So we will be left with this much of available resources. So after it gets one instance of resource B, it will get all resources it needs for execution. Now as it has all resources required it will get executed completely. And after execution it will release all its allocated resources, that means it will release two instances of resource B and one instance of resource C. So these will get added in free resources that is available matrix. So the available matrix will be plus 0, plus 2, plus 1, and plus 0. That will be 1, 6, 3, and 0. So now the updated mat rises will be as follows, available resources will get updated. And P0's need is completed. We will maintain a sequence in which processes get executed. As P0 is executed first, it will be added first in the sequence.